Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And if you think you know everything about the Beatles, think again. Today we're deep diving into some of the most obscure and surprising facts about the Fab Four that even hardcore fans might not know. From secret inspirations behind their iconic songs to bizarre movie roles they almost took on. And even hidden stories behind the music. We've got it all. So whether you're a casual listener or a die-hard Beatles maniac, stick around for some wild trivia that will totally blow your mind. Let's get started. One reason Ringo has such a unique vice on the kit is, surprise, surprise, he's left-handed. He's a left-handed drummer who plays a right-handed setup. You can hear how he often uses his left hand to play accents and keep time on the hi-hat and he executes his fills leading with his left. Always curious about new instruments, Harrison brought the Moog synthesizer into the studio during the recording of Abbey Road. This was one of the earliest uses of the Moog in a major pop album, adding a futuristic sound to tracks like Here Comes the Sun. George Harrison had this to say, I first heard about the Moog synthesizer in America. I had to have mine made specially. Mr. Moog had only just invented it. It was enormous with hundreds of jack plugs and two keyboards. In the late 1960s, the Beatles considered making a film adaptation of The Lord of the Rings with Lennon pushing for the role of Gollum. They even approached Stanley Kubrick to direct but the project never took off. Peter Jackson explained, ultimately they couldn't get the rights from Tolkien because he didn't like the idea of a pop group doing his story. So they got nixed by him. They tried to do it. There's no doubt about it. From a moment in time, they were seriously contemplating doing that at the beginning of 1968. Rumor has it, McCarty would have played Frodo, George Harrison would have portrayed Gandalf, Ringo Starr would have been Sam, and funny enough, John Lennon would have played Gollum. Lennon co-wrote and performed backing vocals on David Bowie's hit, Fame, in 1975. The collaboration came after Lennon and Bowie struck up a friendship, and the song became one of Bowie's signature tracks. The Beatles chose not to release any singles from their groundbreaking album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band at the time of its release in 1967, which was unusual for the band. They believed that the album should be experienced as a complete work, but technically they did release a single, Penny Lane's Strawberry Fields, but they decided not to include it on the album. Paul McCartney wrote Golden Slumbers based on a 17th century poem. The song Golden Slumbers from Abbey Road is partially based on a 1603 poem by Thomas Decker. McCartney couldn't read the original sheet music at his father's house, so he wrote his own melody using the poem's lyrics. The opening note of I Feel Fine features guitar feedback, making it one of the first instances of recorded feedback in rock music. This accidental discovery paved the way for future experimentation in sound. The first pop release to feature sitar was Norwegian Wood, This Bird Has Flown, issued on the Beatles' Rubber Soul album in December 1965. With this sitar part, George Harrison became the first Western musician to play an Indian instrument on a commercial recording. The Electric Light Orchestra, ELO, was heavily inspired by the Beatles' Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. ELO was formed to continue the orchestral rock sound that the Beatles began exploring during their later albums. Most assume the Beatles first arrived in the United States together in 1964. But George Harrison actually went on vacation to the U.S. in 1963 visiting his sister in Illinois. While there, he bought a Rickenbacker guitar that would later become iconic in the band's sound. Produced by John Glenn's My Dark Hour came about when John's happened into the studio right after a big fight among the Beatles. In 1969, after a tense Beatles recording session, McCartney jammed with Steve Miller on his track My Dark Hour under the pseudonym Paul Ramone. 
When Johns arrived, the others, including Klein, had left. McCartney was fuming, he told his friend and biographer Barry Miles. Steve Miller happened to be there recording late at night and he just breezed in. Hey, what's happening, man? Can I use the studio? Yeah, I said. Can I drum for you? I just had a fucking unholy argument with these guys there, I explained to him. Took 10 minutes to get it off my chest. So I did a track. He and I stayed that night and did a track of his called My Dark Hour. I thrashed everything out on the drums. There's a surfeit of aggressive drum fills. That's all I can say about that. We stayed up until late. I played bass, guitar, and drums, and sang backing vocals. It's actually a pretty good track. It was a very strange time in my life. I swear I got my first gray hairs that month. I saw them appearing. I looked in the mirror. I thought, I can see you. You're all coming now. Welcome. This collaboration also influenced the riff for Fly Like an Eagle. Paul McCartney and John Lennon wrote a play about Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Paul told BBC Radio 4, It was the era of the kitchen sink, so we wrote this play. We only got four pages in. This was before the Beatles, when we were just hanging out writing our earlier songs. We started this play, and upon discovering it years later, I said, Oh, stop. And I read it, and I said, that's the play I've been talking about forever, and I really thought it was lost. For years, I've been telling people that me and John wrote a play, he said, according to The Guardian, and it's about the Messiah, actually. McCartney discussed the play in his 1997 biography, Many Years From Now, by Barry Miles. We were going to have this character, the person upstairs who never comes in. And the play is just people talking about him and his terrible crisis. Oh, our Picard, you know, he's taken a turn. He's born again, and he really thinks he's the Messiah. He's upstairs praying. This was the way it was going to go. But we couldn't figure out how playwrights did it, said McCartney then. And there you have it, some truly obscure and surprising facts about the Beatles that even die-hard fans might not know. From Ringo's drumming style to nearly starring in The Lord of the Rings, the Beatles story is full of fascinating twists and turns. But trust me, there's so much more where that came from. Let me know in the comments below did you learn anything new, or you heard it all before. And if you enjoyed learning these hidden gems about the Fab Four, make sure you hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe for more deep dives into music history. Also, if you really liked today's video and would like me to do a part two, let me know and we'll uncover even more rare and mind-blowing facts about the Beatles. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.